Hello students, let's do framing algebraic expressions, exercise 15a. This is found on page number 160. Question 1. Write in the form of an algebraic expression. What does that mean? A statement will be given to us like this first question and we need to write this in the form of symbols. So without words, we're going to express in the form of variables and signs. So that is called an algebraic expression. So let's start this. Question 1 says, write this as an algebraic expression. That is, perimeter of a rectangle is 2 times the sum of its length and its breadth. And perimeter is given to us as a capital P. Length is small l and breadth is small b. So let's start. So the length of a rectangle is given as a small l. The breadth of a rectangle is given as the small letter b. The perimeter of the rectangle is given as a capital letter P. Now we have to write the algebraic expression for the statement which says perimeter of a rectangle. So let's write that. Perimeter of a rectangle is 2 times. 2 times means into. 2 times the sum means addition. The sum of its length and breadth. That means we need to add length and breadth. Now, usually in algebraic, in an algebraic expression, we don't write the multiplication symbol. So, another way of writing this is P is equal to 2 into, so we don't put a symbol before a bracket that it's understood its multiplication, length plus breadth. So, this is the algebraic expression for the first question. Question 2. Perimeter of a square is 4 times its side. So first let's write what's given to us. The side of the square is, let's represent it with the letter S. Then the perimeter of the square is given to us as capital letter P. Now we have to write the algebraic expression for this. So what does it say? Perimeter of a square, so perimeter of a square is 4 times, it means 4 into side. 4 into side. Or we can also remove the multiplication sign and write perimeter is equal to 4s. Area of a square. Next one. Area of a square is square of its side. So let's start this. So let the area of a square be. Let's give it a symbol A. The side of the square be S. And the algebraic expression will be area of a square is square of its side that means side square square of its side or you can also say a is equal to s square side square question four surface area of a cube is six times the square of its edge so let the surface of area of a cube be S, since it's surface, we'll put it as S. Let the edge be. We can leave the edge as edge itself or give it a letter to represent it. So the algebraic expression will be surface area is 6 times the square of its edge. That means edge square. The square of its edge. So here we can remove the multiplication sign and write 6 edge square. Next question. Express each of the following as an algebraic expression. The sum of x and y minus m. So this is simple. So the algebraic expression will be the sum of x and y. Sum means addition. So x plus y minus m. So we are using only signs and symbols with variables here. Question 2. The product of x and y divided by m. The algebraic expression will be now product of x and y means x into y divided by m. So like I said, in, in, a, in an algebraic expression, generally we don't use the multiplication sign. Instead, it's understood when we put x, y that it is multiplication. So x, y by m. Next question, the subtraction of 5m 
from 3n and then adding 9p to it. So let's take the first part. Okay, and let's start. The algebraic expression is subtraction of 5m from 3n. So 3n will come first minus 5m and then what does the second part say? And then adding 9p to it. So let's add 9p to it. So this is our algebraic expression. Question 4. The product of 12 x, y and z minus the product of 5 m and n. Okay, so let's write the algebraic expression. Product means multiplication. So 12 into x into y into z minus, now all this, minus the product of 5 into m into n. So now let's remove all the multiplication signs and see what we get. So 12 x y z minus 5 m n that's it question 5 sum of p and 2r minus s minus sum of a and 3n plus 4x so the algebraic expression will be now let's take the first part sum of p and 2r minus s sum means addition so p plus 2r minus s now go on to the next part minus again the sum of so let's put that in brackets sum of a and 3n plus 4x so a plus 3n plus 4x so this is the algebraic expression question 3 we need to construct a formula for this statement total wages of a man whose basic wage is given when he works for two hours a week plus overtime overtime is the extra time he puts in per hour if he works a total of t hours so now let's write what's given to us total wages is given to us which is rupees w okay then the wages for t hours is given that is the basic wage this is the basic wage for t hours plus we have overtime overtime is t which is the total hours of work minus the t hours a, a week so when you minus both you get the overtime then the wages for overtime the wages for overtime will be rupees r t minus t now the total wages this is the formula we need to make the total wages is equal to it will be the wages for t hours that he works plus the wages for the overtime the extra time that he puts in so total wages is W, that is rupees W here. Wages for T hours is rupees B, capital B. We are taking it all from here. Then the wages for overtime, wages for overtime is given here as rupees R into T minus T hours. So this is the formula. Now when we have to rewrite uh, this as a formula, we don't write the units. We write W equals B plus R into T minus T, small t. So this is the final formula. W equals B plus R into T minus T. Question 4. From the formula that is given to us, we have to calculate the value of B when a is 3 and b is minus 1 so we are going to substitute these values for a and b so first let's write down what's given to us a is given as 3 b is given as minus 1 now we have to find b is equal to 2a square minus b square we have to find the value of b so we're going to start so here 2a square means 2 into a square minus b square. Now let's start working this out. 2 into, now a is 3, 3 square minus b is minus 1 square. Okay, now 2 into 3 square means 3 into 3 minus, now here minus 1 square means minus 1 into minus 1. Minus into minus is plus, 1 into 1 is 1. So here it is minus 1. So let's calculate this one. Now 2 into, now this is 2 into 3, 2 3s are 6, 6 3s are 18. 
18 minus 1, which is 17. So we have found the value of B to be 17. So this is our answer. B is equal to 17. So what did we do here? We just substituted A and B for the values given in the question. Let's move on to the next question. Question 5. The wages of a man earning rupees X per hour for T hours are given by the formula. So they have given us a formula. W is equal to X T. Where W is the wages. X is the amount that a man earned and T is the time. Now we are asked to find his wages working 40 hours at the rate of so much per hour. So let's start with what is given to us. Time is 40 hours. This is given to us in the question. The rate is, it says, 39 rupees and 45 paise per hour. Okay, so for one hour, it's so much. Now they want us to find his wages for 40 hours. So let's use the formula. Formula is given to us again. Wages equals x into t. That is, x is equal to, x is equal to the rate. So let me put that here. x is the rate and t is the time. So let's write that down. Let's get our formula here and substitute these values. x is 39 rupees 45 paise and time is 40 hours. So let's multiply these two and see what we get. So when we multiply decimal numbers, let's ignore the point. So 3945, we'll ignore the point and write and multiply this by 40. So the first step will all be zeros because we are multiplying by zero. Second step, four fives are 20, carry two. Four fours are 16, plus two is 18, carry one. Four nines are 36, plus one 37, carry three. Four threes are 12, plus three. 13, 14, 15. So we've got this. Now let's add this up. 0, 0, then we have 8, 7, 5, 1. Now let's go back to the question and check the number of decimal places. There are two decimal places. So in our answer also there should be two decimal places. So I can put my point there. So I have found the wages. The wages will be rupees 1000. 578. So these are the wages for working for 40 hours. So this is our answer 1578 rupees. Question 6. The temperature in Fahrenheit scale is represented by F and the temperature in the Celsius scale is represented by C. If, now they've given us this formula. This is the formula to find Fahrenheit and they've asked us to find the Fahrenheit when C, the temperature in Celsius scale is 40 degrees. So let's start. The temperature is given as 40 degrees in the Celsius scale. Now we have to find Fahrenheit by using this formula. So let's start. You're going to find Fahrenheit and let's use 9 by 5 into C. C is what is given to us, 40 degrees plus 32 degrees. So let's do this multiplication part first. So let's finish this. Let's see if we can cancel something here. Yes, I can cancel 5 and 40. 5 eighths are 40. So now I can multiply this. So what do I get? I get 9 eighths are 72. So that's 72 degrees plus 32 degrees. So let's add up 72 and 32. 2 plus 2 is 4 and then we add up 7 plus 3 which is 10. So in the Fahrenheit scale the temperature will be 104 degrees when the Celsius scale is 40 degrees. So this is our answer 104 degrees. Question 7. Find the average of four quantities. So the four quantities are given here, P, Q, R and S. We have to find the average. Now for each one, there is a value given to us. Okay, now average is A. So the value of A is given to us, value of P, Q and R. Now we have to find the value of S. 
So let's start by writing the formula to find average. Average is the sum of all the quantities. You add up all the quantities and then you add by the number of quantities. So here we have four quantities. So let's start this. So average, let me write it as A. It's given in the question. Now sum of all the quantities means we add up everything. So P is 3. So we need to add up all the different quantities given to us. Let me write that first. So that is P plus Q plus R plus S. So we have to add up all these quantities and then divide this by the number of quantities. Now how many quantities do we have? P, Q, R, S. That means we have four quantities. So this is what we need to do. So let's start substituting. So instead of A, I'm going to write 6 because it's given to us in the question. Then P is given to us as 3, Q is 5, R is 7, and S is not given. We've been asked to find the value of S. So we'll leave it as S there. Divide all this by 4. So let's work this out. So this will be equal to, again, area equals. Now let's add up all this. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 plus 7 is 15. Then we write 15 plus S. So 15 plus S divided by 4. So this will be, I'm going to just change the sides. 15 plus S equals, now this is by 4 equals 6. So to find the value of 15 plus S, I will transpose 4 from the left hand side to the right hand side. So there it becomes multiplication 6 into 4. So that is 15 plus S is equal to 6 fours are 24. So now we can find the value of S by leaving it on the left hand side. Then 24 is on the right hand side. Now I can move 15 to the right hand side. It becomes minus 15. So 24 minus 15. Let's minus and see. 24 minus 15. So this is 1. 14 minus 5 is 9. So here S, we have found the value of S to be 9. So here we will have two answers. The first question is, Find the average. So this is the first part of the answer. So we've got average with the formula P plus Q plus R plus S divided by 4. That's the first part. Then the second part we have found here S is equal to 9. Question 8. Find T. If T is equal to 2A minus P. They've given us this and they've given us the values of A and B. So let's start. A is given as 7, B is given as 3, now T is also given as 2A minus B, so we have to find T. So 2A minus B means 2 into A minus B. So let's substitute 2 into A is 7 and B is 3. So 2 into 7 is 14, 14 minus 3. So let's subtract 14 and 3. 14 minus 3, 4 minus 3 is 1 and 1. So 14 minus 3 is 11. So we have found the value of T to be 11. So the final answer, T is 11. So with that, children, we come to the end of this exercise. Thank you, children.